Welcome to a video about the MBS plugin 11.1 .1. and what's new. Let's install the plugin. So I have FileMaker. FileMaker has a preference dialog and there you can show the plugins folder. But since we have several FileMaker versions, we may not want to use a folder for version 19, but go up the level and just pick here the shared extension folder and drop the plugin in there. Now I have to restart FileMaker, so quit it, start again. And yes, we may have a plugin here. Yeah. Okay, there it is. So you can see all the new options here. And in general, we enable most of them. But that may be your personal preference. So let's start and show you a few examples. So in the examples folder, we have the macOS folder and there's data detector and I want to show you this example because it's very nice to utilize all the frameworks from Apple on a Mac or iOS device and for example run data detectors to detect data within your text. So we have some text here, it has phone numbers, it has a date, it has an URL, it has an address, uh, airline information, number address, phone number, uh, date with duration, an email address. And if you look at the output here, we get a nice JSON back where we have all the information listed. So you can process it and easily find all the stuff in the text. Okay, after using this framework, we may want to use a different framework. And I have Xcode here and I have a test project for iOS. Let's see, there is a database included, solution files there. It's usually we have play a lot of things here. So this is an example picture. We have a script. The script shows you that uh, the preview panel gets cleared. We add a container with a picture. We set a trigger for when it's closed. We allow editing with mode 2 and we show the panel. And when it gets dismissed, we ask the panel for saved files and then if we got a file, we can import it again. So let's close this and launch our iOS app in the simulator. And you may ask what this is all about, but you will see in a second when the simulator is booting up and our app launches. You will see what cool features we have. So, oh, there's a simulator. App launches. There it is, finally. So we have our container. We can work with the container normally, but we can also run our script. And this shows the preview. And then we have here this markup button. So we can actually annotate this picture and draw something. Yeah. Well, that's a pen of, of I'll make it thicker. And seems to be difficult to draw something with a mouse, but in general it works. Oh, we can put a linear on it. And when you are done, you can press a done button and the 
modified picture with your drawings is stored. So you can have your users annotate PDF documents, pictures on iOS, on device with the built-in system tools. And of course we can repeat that. So I can click annotate. I can even, oh well, if I draw something new, I can undo it. Or I can't undo the previous editions. Okay, so you can mark items which may be interesting for you. Okay, done. And let's close this and go to the next thing. Stop. Next, I want to show you something about barcodes. In Europe, we love to put barcodes on our invoices. And here is an example barcode which we created with the plugin. So we have a script generated. Well, first, remove it. So you see, yeah, this barcode is generated here based on the input, which is more or less just a little bit text encoded as a barcode with a high, uh, high level of ECC error correction code. So we can show it nicely in a container, we can print it and we can put it on the invoice. The user can scan it in his online banking app on the iPhone, get the bank account correctly, the amount, the reference number, and then they can, well, make a donation or pay an invoice. After that, I would like to show you our additions for the, for the dialogues. So let's create a new file. Let's say we take the example here, assets, store on desktop. We may have a script. A script may have a set variable, record. So let's first make a record, test here, description, hello. Go back to set variable. And we take the name. Let's say we combine that with a description. And now you may want to debug this and see if that's the right calculation. So we got here with the MBS plugin two new buttons and a text field. So we can check the syntax. Yes, syntax OK. Let's make a mistake. Put an extra bracket. Oh, or formatting turned in. So we have a wrong bracket here. We press the button and it says, okay, there's something wrong. We can also execute it and see we get our test and hello combined. And this way you may enjoy having your coding a little bit easier where you can check for syntax error and fix your bugs before you make them. Uh, at least before you commit the calculation. So you may also use that for a custom function. So here's a custom function dialog. Let's say we make a new function function. Let's say it's a simple function. We concat to strings plus and b plus. So we have two parameters here. Let's make this a little bit larger. So our calculation may be simply let's say A and B. And now you may wonder, well, is the syntax correct? Oh, there's all the bug. Okay, remove that. Shake again, and now it's okay. Oh, we may want to execute it. Hmm. Let's define that we want to have those variables, well, those parameters be filled. So we can use the MBS plugin and put Put a comment here and say this is 
hello and let's say b is get account name and now we can execute it again and it tells us hello admin so with three slashes you can define a command which the plugin uses to look up for lines which fill the parameters listed above with actual values and those values can of course be calculations then the plugin can build internally a let statement where it assigns this uh, values with the expressions given here and we can then calculate the expression show you the result right here this allows you to debug your custom functions and include maybe a few test cases here like you can comment, uncomment, whatever you like so we can just have here several values and say this is um, executed now so this A is now taken and you can just, well, if you decide put another slash here, execute again oh, oh yeah um, Let's say I'll move a slash. Now it's not recognized. And we get our hello back. So you can have several assignments there for various edge cases and run your calculation. And there's one note for recursion. If you call your function yourself here recursively, you would call the saved state for the recursion, not the current edit state. But if Claris decides to implement a similar feature, they may do it with calling the currently edited state. So let's save this, close, and let's show you the next feature. And that's debugger tooltips. So let's say you have a variable assigned, you may have a field assigned here in a script. Um, we had description let's say serial number and let's say we put something in we may also set a global variable dollar dollar test hello and let's make another step here something where we can put a breakpoint save the script debug the script and now you may usually go with the data viewer here and you may want to look up values here but well you have a lot of values here and you may have dozens of fields dozens of globals um well you may first go and say you use the data viewer so let's click here on the title bar to bring it in front click on the list you can of course use command F in the plugin to, to search for things. So I can here jump to the next result. But you can also use the MBS plugin to just hide the items you don't need. Like we have command option F to hide the global fields. And as you see, we don't really hide them. We just set the high of each row to one, which makes them kind of invisible and this also works with command option G for globals so if you have a long list of a lot of globals you may reduce the list to a size where you actually can see your local variables but because looking up variable in a long list can be a lot of work so we added this nice feature where you can move the mouse over an item in in the um, in the debugger and we look up the value for you yeah, let's let's just edit the script make another set here So we go, let us run, and now we can look up dollar dollar test is hello, and it's a text. In contrast, 
image is a container field, R is a text, hello world, and you may not notice, but sometimes you have this little thing that there may be a number value, and you think it's a number, but it's not. So one, two, three is a number, and this is, let's say this is one, two, three in quotes. And by showing you the tooltip with, with the data type, we can show you that this is a text and this is a number. This is a global with a text. And this is actually a container field. So we report the value as a container. So, well, you put the number in the container, you get a container. Serial, this is not showing. The plugin recognized that here as a double colon, double colon serial. Could be a field name, but there is no field name found this way because the plugin doesn't currently look for anything past the space character. In general, I would not use spaces in uh, field names usually because it makes it difficult to use it with SQL commands where you have to use quotes on the field names. Anyway, it works with variables, local, and it works with fields even those not assigned here, so you can see all the values you reference. And I hope this helps you a lot in your debugging, at least if you're using a Mac. But maybe that's the reason to move from Windows to Mac. So thank you for watching. Enjoy the new plugin. Check all the other features, including those for Windows. Thank you for watching.